Hey guys, it's Stephanie here with The Flower Fanatic. It's baking time because I can't be out in my garden. I absolutely love this cheesecake recipe. It uses mascarpone, which is much lighter than regular cream cheese. It also has cream cheese, but it makes it so much more fluffy, smooth, buttery. It's not super dense like your typical cheesecake that you bake in the oven, so you don't have to bake this one. I'm just gonna get right to it. Let's get started with the crust. The first thing that you need to do is get almost 20 Oreos. I'm gonna take an Oreo and I'm just gonna take out the centers. So you just scrape them out. You don't need any of those fillings. You're gonna have a lot of Oreo frosting. Let your kids eat it, I guess. And then I just crumble them up before I put them into my blender. If you don't have a blender, you can use a rolling pin with a Ziploc bag or even a food processor. That would work really good. But I'm just gonna throw them into my Blendtec blender. Oh, I missed some of that. Here we go. Okay, so I need about a one and a half cup of finely ground crumbs. So I'm just gonna pulse it. I'll just pour that back into here. So you got a cup and a half right here. All right, then I'm gonna take in my one stick of melted butter and pour it into my Oreo crumbs right here. I love the contrast of a chocolate crust with a creamy filling. This crust is so fun, it's a little bit crumbly, it comes together nicely, and it gives you that little gritty texture you like when you take a bite. I'll just mix that in, and then the next thing I'll add is one tablespoon of sugar, just for a little extra sweetness, if you didn't think <laughs> the Oreos were sweet enough. I'll mix that up until it's all nice and combined. Okay, that looks good enough. And then I'm choosing to put my crust in little four inch spring form pans. I think they're so cute. So I have four of them. If you don't have one of those, you can just use your typical nine inch spring form pan. These little ones came with these cute little parchment papers. So I'll stick that down there. Get that ready. All right, I'm gonna get them in my spring form pans show you how I put them in, and then once that's done, I'll stick it in the freezer for 10 minutes. That's all it needs is 10 minutes, and then you're ready to put your filling in. Now that my crust is in the freezer, let's get started on our filling. The first thing that you're gonna do is get eight ounces of cream cheese. It's cold, make sure all this stuff is cooled. And then I will get two thirds cup of sugar. I'll get my beaters and I'll just start mixing them on medium high speed for about two minutes, one to two minutes. It comes together really, really quickly. See? Actually, that only take, took about 30 seconds. Okay, I'll just dry those off. Toss the rag. <laughs> Get my beaters back in there. Okay, so now I have one and one fourth cups of heavy whipping whipping cream. I'll just pour that in. This is one of my most favorite things to eat ever is whipping cream. And then a whole tablespoon of pure vanilla extract. I don't even know why they call the imitation vanilla, imitation vanilla. You want the real stuff because there is a huge difference and the imitation doesn't taste the same at all. This gives it so much more flavor. And I like a lot of it. Okay. And I'm gonna whip to, I want it to be stiff peaks. So about three minutes. Holy crap guys, that whipping cream whipped in like 30 seconds. I've never had whipping cream whipped that fast. I do not know what's going on today, but I'm gonna add my mascarpone cheese and this is, a little bit on the wetter side, so I only wanna mix it in just until combined, literally like 10 seconds, or else it can become too wet. So let's pour it in here, or scoop it in here. And I'm using 16 ounces. It's a really delicate, soft cheese. 
and it's great for Italian desserts. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna grab my beater and just mix it on low speed. Count for about 10 seconds. All right, that's it. Told you it didn't take very long. Get the rest of that off. And the last step I will do is just com combine my cream cheese and sugar with my mascarpone and whipping cream. I'll just fold it in. I'm just gonna gently fold it in. I don't wanna over mix it and lose all the air pockets and fluffiness. <laughs> Okay, I'll just keep folding it until it looks smooth. Now we're ready to put it into my crust that has been chilling. And then once that's done, we'll get it out of the fridge and put it all together and make it look beautiful. Next, we're gonna make an easy berry puree. All you need is two cups strawberry, one cup raspberry, one real lemon, and some more pure vanilla extract. Super easy, I'm gonna take it over to my stove top to show you how I do it. It adds a really nice tartness to the creamy filling. All right, guys, my cheesecake has been chilling overnight. My puree chilled for a few hours. You don't want to put hot berry sauce puree over your cheesecake or it will just melt and that would be really sad. I have some blueberries here, some cinnamon, and some carnation flowers. I want to show you one that I've already decorated. Doesn't that look so, so gorgeous? I'm no professional by any means, but I am the flower fanatic and it wouldn't be the same if I didn't add some flowers. These carnations are edible, so that's super fun. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I put it together. I'm gonna get my cinnamon here and put it in a little mini mesh strainer. Oh, <laughs> and then I'll just dab it around. Okay. Ooh, the cinnamon is so good on this. It is a game changer. And then I'll get my berry sauce. I like to be really, really generous with my berry sauce. So depending on how much you like, put, put as much on as you want. I usually go back and get another tablespoon or two. I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it over there, over the top. Mm, I cannot wait to eat this. Okay, now I'll just kind of dab it around so you can dip each bite on your plate. Okay. Now I get to cut my carnation flowers. So you don't want to eat this part if you're going to choose to eat whole flower. Just make sure you peel that off. Okay, get that nice pink one. Get a red one and then a white. Then we got to add a little bit of blue pop to it with these blueberries. They actually taste really good with this cheesecake. And then I'll just kind of squish them underneath the flowers. Doesn't that look beautiful? Isn't it coming together so pretty? 
Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna get this flower and then you just pull off the stem and then you kind of just sprinkle those petals around. This would be so romantic for Valentine's Day. The only problem is my husband would probably not get one bite of this. It'd be worth it though. <laughs> I am not kidding you. I wish you guys could be here to take this first bite with me. It is the best cheesecake. I'm not a huge fan of those dense, heavy cheesecakes. This one is light, it's super fluffy, and it's very, very creamy. I really wish you could see the close-up of this. It is actually one of the best things I've ever eaten. Mm. Thanks for watching. It's super fun to bake when I can't be in my garden. I love bringing in flowers to give me that garden fill. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing. I have a ton more content coming. I'd love for you to join my journey. And I will talk to you later and see you in my next videos. Have a good night or day. <laughs>